Hello everybody, a lot of you have asked me questions about getting the Canadian PR after completing your studies in Canada and most of the questions revolve around the possibilities of getting the Canadian PR after completing one year a degree or diploma here in Canada. So first of all, is it actually possible to get the PR after completing your one year degree or diploma in Canada? Mm -hmm. Definitely it is. But yes, there are certain challenges that you will face and we will talk exactly about that. So in this video, we'll talk about getting the Canadian PR after completing one year study here in Canada. If you're interested, stay tuned. And guys, before I start talking about it in detail, I want to remind you of subscribing to the new channel Dreamers Abroad. We are uploading some really fun content over there. It's a Hindi vlogging channel. So if you want to check out that channel, I'll provide the link in the description box below. The name is Dreamers Abroad. You know Dream Abroad? Now Dreamers Abroad. Okay, without any further ado, let's start discussing about the main topic of this video. But to understand that, we have to get our facts straight. If you go for a one year uh, study permit here in Canada, then you will get one year PGWP, which is postgraduate work permit. And if you go for a two year degree or diploma, then you would eventually get a three year PGWP. So it is definitely beneficial if you actually go on for a two year course here in Canada, because of course you'll get that extra time, extra two years to complete uh, your work experience. And then you can apply through the Express Entry program and you can get the PR very easily. So yes, if you can, then you should definitely go on to apply for two year study permit because life would be a lot easier you won't have uh, you know much troubles thinking about if you would actually get the pr or not but many of us actually choose to go for one year program and in that case there are certain challenges that we'll discuss uh, in this video so as i told you you'll get only one year pgwp after completing your studies now this pgwp is a once in a lifetime opportunity for anyone to search for a job and then maybe you can apply for a different um, work permit or go for the permanent residency but yes as i told you there would be certain challenges and to understand that first of all we should know about the express entry program so the most famous program to get the canadian pr is the express entry program there are other uh, ways to get the pr as well but express entry program is the most famous out of all because it is conducted by the government of canada the federal government of canada it's not conducted by any uh, provincial government so here it's important to know about three streams first of all the FSW, Federal Skilled Worker, then CEC, which is Canadian Experience Class, and then FSTC, which is Federal Skilled Trade Class. The third category that I told you about is for all of those people who go for skilled trades. Uh, for example, if you're in plumbing, if you're in welding, all those jobs actually go for, um, you know, a Federal Skilled Trades Class. So if you don't belong to skilled trades occupations, then probably you belong to FSW or CEC. What is FSW? All those people who have got Canadian work experience actually go to apply the PR through the FSW stream and all those people who have one year or more of Canadian work experience in NOC jobs 0 A or B actually go to apply the PR through the CEC uh, category. So yes, you can apply the PR through both of these streams. If you don't have the Canadian work experience of one year or more, then you can go through FSW uh, category, but probably there are high chances that your score won't be high enough so that you can clear the threshold uh, for the you know cutoff score for each draw that keeps happening every alternate week. Now here it's important to know that Canada hasn't conducted any FSW draw in the entire 2021 at least until now and there are chances that they will do it in the future but CEC draws have been getting conducted since the start of 2021. There haven't been any change and yes, the cutoff scores have been also very low for CEC candidates. So yes, you can expect that going forward also, even if they don't conduct the FSW draws, they would still conduct the CEC draws and all those people who have got a Canadian work experience of one year or more would get the permanent residency through that uh, CEC stream. So basically, all of those people who are completing the uh, one year or two year 
uh, study here in Canada would actually like to go on for CEC category instead of the FSW category because obviously you'll have more chances of uh, getting PR through that CEC stream. So here comes the greatest challenge for all those people who came to Canada on one year study program. You remember I told you earlier all those people would get only one year PGWP which means that they will have only that one year to get the Canadian work experience so that they're eligible for the CEC category. Of course, you've got only one year work permit, so you've got to utilize every single day of that work permit. You are not allowed to take uh, you know, days off or months off to take rest during that one year time because you have to utilize that one year to the fullest. And apart from that one year, there's some extra time that you can actually leverage as well. What is that all about? That is the time which will make all the difference. It is very important to understand the timeline because only after that you would be able to uh, get that confidence that yes, after one year study program also you can get the Canadian PR. So you have to apply within 90 days of when your letter of completion first becomes available and when your study permit is still valid. Yes, you can apply within 180 days as well, but there are certain conditions for that so you should take care of that so in a general sense we can say that you have 90 days to apply your pgwp so you can use that three months time to your advantage how first of all you should uh, search for those jobs which can actually get you the pr remember i told you for the cec category you have to be working for one of those jobs which are noc 0 a or b if you don't uh, know about that, I'll provide the link in the description box below. You can check the complete list out. It's a big, big list. You can check uh, if your job would actually be one of those jobs or not. And before we talk about the time when you've applied the PGWP, let's talk about co-op as well. There are certain uh, programs which actually requires co-op, which is not internship. Co-op is different from internship. I'll talk about it maybe in a different video but you can use internship or co-op for your advantage maybe you are working uh, in a company for co-op or internship you can actually have healthy relationship with your employer uh, or that company where you are working and you can impress them with your work and request that you want a full-time job if your job is uh, among that uh, list of noc0 a or b so yes you can use those few months to your advantage by actually getting the job offer that you actually want now of course to work here you would need a work permit and when you apply for the work permit you don't have to wait for the work permit to be issued before you start working that is the beauty when you actually apply for the uh, postgraduate work permit you can start working and that work experience will actually be counted for your Canadian work experience when you apply for the Canadian PR. So usually the processing times of uh, PGWP were from one month to two months, but now because of COVID, it is from one month to five months. So let's say that the processing time of your PGWP is three months. So you get that extra three months, which you can uh, add to your work experience, right? So that is very crucial. You should have a job in hand before you apply uh, for that PGWP so that you can start working right away without wasting any more time. And then those few months can also be counted in your Canadian work experience. Now here, many people might have a question, will your work experience for internship or co-op, would that be also counted for your Canadian work experience? No, unfortunately that's not counted because you haven't applied for your PGWP and also you don't have the PGWP yet, right? So that won't be counted, but since the time you apply your PGWP, your Canadian work experience would be counted. So now those two, three months of Canadian work experience while your PGWP application was in process, plus your work experience when your PGWP has been issued. So when once you complete one year, the one complete year, then you can actually apply for the Canadian PR through the CEC category, as I told you earlier. And obviously, uh, as soon as you get the ITA, hopefully your score would be very high and the cutoff scores are going very low these days anyways. Uh, then you should directly get the ITA very soon. Once you get the ITA, which is invitation to apply, 
then even if your PGWP gets expired, before that you can apply for a bridging open work permit. What is that? While you're waiting for your permanent uh, residency application, you can actually go for a bridging work permit. And with that work permit, you will be legally allowed to work in Canada until you get your PR approved. So yes, this is the complete pathway for all of those who uh, complete the one year program to getting the PR. But yes, let's say if you are not able to uh, get a job right away or maybe apply for the Canadian PR, or maybe uh, you don't get the ITA right in time because the timelines are very stringent here, right? Timelines are very, very stringent. So if you don't get that, then in that case, you can also request your employer to be the sponsor of the work permit. That is also a possibility because the PGWP cannot be extended. So you can apply for a new work permit and your employer can sponsor you. So it is very important that you have very healthy relationships with your employer you work really hard in that one year uh, time so that your employer can sponsor you for the uh, next work permit and then eventually once you gain experience you can go for the pr so guys as i told you this process is uh, very complex i tried to break it down in simple words for you so that you can understand it and that is why i told you that if you go for the two year uh, study programs then life would be a lot easier for you I know many people here who came here on the one year program and eventually they are very stressed out almost every time I meet them because obviously they are worried that will they be able to uh, you know complete their work experience in time will they be able to get the ITA in time so that they are eligible for the PR of course almost everyone who comes here to study actually wants to get the PR so nobody wants to go back to their home country after completing their studies at least I haven't met any person like that until now so basically yes this was the complete process this was the timeline how you can actually get the PR after completing your one year study program here in Canada uh, this was all the information that I wanted to convey through this video. Yes, there are more videos that would be coming in for international students who want to pursue their higher education in Canada and apart from Canada around the world as well. There's already a playlist in my channel for all of those people who want to study uh, in Canada and now I'll be making more videos because many, many people are requesting me to do that. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Keep showering your love on the new channel as well, Dreamers Abroad. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, then please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again for watching this video.